Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, which doesn't make much sense, and then I'm going to start checking out my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. This is a crazy book, it's one of those that's very hard to follow what's happening, although it almost doesn't matter in a way. Titan, one of the moons of Saturn, and a place of delight. Among the inhabitants, Winston Runford, a space traveller caught up in chronosynclastic infundibulum, one of the hazards of intruding in space-time. Malachi Constant, the richest and luckiest man on Earth, now in exile, and what price is riches now? And Sato, a visitor from Tralfamador, a planet in another galaxy, bearing a message from one rim of the universe to the other. Some visitor, some message. So I want to start with a dedication here for Alex Vonnegut, special agent with love. All persons, places and events in this book are real. Certain speeches and thoughts are necessarily constructions by the author. No names have been changed to protect the innocent, since God Almighty protects the innocent as a matter of heavenly routine. So uh, we learn a little bit about Mrs. Rumford here. Um, the man who had let himself in was the first person ever invited by Mrs. Rumford to a materialization. He was not a great scientist. He was not even well educated. He had been thrown out of the University of Virginia in the middle of his freshman year. He was Malachi Constant of Hollywood, California, the richest American and a notorious rake hell. Beware of the dog, the sign outside the small iron door had said. But inside the wall there was only a dog's skeleton. It wore a cruelly spiked collar that was chained to the wall. It was the skeleton of a very large dog, a mastiff. Its long teeth meshed. Its skull and jaws formed a cunningly articulated, harmless working model of a flesh ripping machine. The jaws closed so, clack. Here had been the bright eyes, there the keen ears, there the suspicious nostrils, there the carnivore's brain. Ropes of muscle had hooked here and here, had brought the teeth together and flesh so, clack. The skeleton was symbolic, a prop, a conversation piece installed by a woman who spoke to almost no one. No dog had died at his post there by the wall. Mrs. Rumford had bought the bones from a veterinarian, had had them bleached and varnished and wired together. The skeleton was one of Mrs. Rumford's many bitter and obscure comments on the nasty tricks time and her husband had played on her. So Constant, we get uh, the freshening sea breeze ruffled Constant's blue-black hair. He was a well-made man, a light heavyweight, dark-skinned with poet's lips, with soft brown eyes in the shaded caves of a Cro-Magnon brow ridge. He was 31. He was worth $3 billion, much of it inherited. I'm 31. This sounds like the kind of thing I'd say, I tell you, Mr. Constant, he said genially. It's a thankless job telling people it's a hard, hard universe they're in. Yeah, people don't want to listen. And, um... I think this is this is interesting. This is like the religious backlash to space travel and whatnot, which was a very real thing, especially at like, the time this was written. When was this uh, first published? Yeah, so this first came out in 1962, so this is quite forward thinking, I think. Two hours after the firing of the whale was called off indefinitely, the Reverend Bobby Denton shouted at his love crusade in Wheeling, West Virginia. I'm going to try and do this. I'm going to try and act out like I'm doing a sermon. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore it is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the languages of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. Bobby Denton spitted his audience on a bright and loving gaze and proceeded to roast it whole over the coals of its own iniquity. Are these not the Bible times, he said. Have we not built it of steel and pride an abomination far taller than the Tower of Babel of old? And did we not mean like those builders of old to get right into heaven with it? And haven't we heard it said many times that the language of scientists is international? They all use the same Latin and Greek words for things, and they all talk the language numbers. This seemed a particularly damning piece of evidence. Also, I am wasted not being in the church. And um, we get this interesting line. Um, Rumford had known that Constant would try to debase the picture by using it in commerce. Constant's father had done a similar thing when he found he could not buy Leonardo's Mona Lisa at any price. The old man had punished Mona Lisa by having her used in an advertising campaign for suppositories. It was the free enterprise way of handling beauty that threatened to get the upper hand. 
we get this line, which I think is great. Uh, there is a riddle about a man who is locked in a room with nothing but a bed and a calendar, and the question is, how does he survive? That answer is, he eats dates from the calendar and drinks water from the springs of the bed. And uh, we get on. To, we we learn how um, Constant's father made his millions. Basically, he had a book of Genesis and he invested in the stock market, finding uh, companies that matched, like that their ticker names matched the words. So, uh, you know, he had I N for international nitrate. So that's for in. Uh, after that came Trowbridge Helicopter, Electra Bakeries, Eternity Granite, Indian Novelty, Norwich Iron, National Gelatin. Granada Oil, Del Mar Creations, Richmond Electroplating, Anderson Trailer, and Eagle Duplicating. That takes us up to uh, in the beginning, God created. That takes us up to the end of created. I thought this was interesting here. Um, at 11.30, said Fern, I was given a copy of the Journal of the American Medical Association, which was marked by our public relations director, FYI. These three letters, as you would know if you had ever spent any time in your office, mean, for your information. I turned to the page referred to and learned, for my information, the moon mist cigarettes were not a cause, but the principal cause of sterility in both sexes, wherever moon mist cigarettes were sold. This fact was discovered not by human beings, but by a computing machine. Whenever data about cigarette smoking was fed into it, the machine grew tremendously excited, and no one could figure out why. The machine was obviously trying to tell its operator something. It did everything it could to express itself and finally managed to get its operators to ask it the right question. We got this uh, just throwaway line, basically people can be kind of brainwashed and have their brains rewritten. It says, there is a story around about how they tried cleaning out a few memories completely. The poor people who had that done to them couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't do anything. The only thing anybody could think of to do with them was to housebreak them, teach them a basic vocabulary of a thousand words and give them jobs in military or industrial public relations. Uh, we get chapter 7, Victory. Uh, it starts with a quote with it which I want to read. There is no reason why good cannot triumph as often as evil. The triumph of anything is a matter of organisation. If there are such things as angels, I hope that they are organised along the lines of the Mafia. That's by Winston Niles Rumford. And um, there's a war between Earth and Mars and it says, The war between Mars and Earth lasted 67 Earthling days. Every nation on Earth was attacked. Earth's casualties were 461 killed, 223 wounded, non-captured and 216 missing. Mars's casualties were 149,315 killed, 446 wounded, 11 captured and 46,634 miss missing. At the end of the war, every Martian had been killed, wounded, captured or missing. Not a soul was left on Mars, not a building was left standing on Mars. The last waves of Martians to attack Earth were, to the horror of the Earthlings who pot-shotted them, old men, women and a few little children. It says uh, the, Martian the Martian troops were on board ships, it says The only controls available to those on board were two push buttons on the centre post of the cabin One labelled on and one labelled off The on button simply started a flight from Mars The off button was connected to nothing It was installed at the insistence of Martian mental health experts Who said that human beings were always happy with machinery they thought they could turn off It says they fired so many rockets at Mars that uh, the barrage turned the skies of Earth from heavenly blue to a hellish burnt orange the skies remained burnt orange for a year and a half. And then we get to these people, um, they have handicaps, so literal handicaps. There were similar bags of shot around his ankles and his other wrist, and two heavy slabs of iron hung on shoulder straps. One slab on his chest and one on his back. These weights were his handicaps in the race of life. He carried 48 pounds, carried them gladly. A stronger person would have carried more, a weaker person would have carried less. Every strong member of Redwine's faith accepted handicaps gladly, wore them proudly everywhere. The weakest and meekest were bound to admit at last that the race of life was fair. We get lots, lots of uh, adverbs and Stephen King said the road to hell is paved, paved with adverbs. So for example we'll here, nip warningly and stuff like that. And we, get, we get a spaceship that wanders along limpingly. Okay, so that's pretty much all I've got to say about the Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. It was pretty good, I enjoyed it enough. Um, 3.5 I think out of 5, maybe, no maybe a 4 out of 5. It's somewhere in the middle to be honest so it's hard to judge. But uh, yeah, would recommend. So there we go, but that's what I made of The Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you've read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.